Hi everyone, welcome to another class on the course of Quantum Theory of Many Body Systems in Condensed Matter given here at the Institute of Physics at the University of Sao Paulo. My name is Luis Gregorio Diaz and today's class we're going to go over the Kubo formula for the conductivity. So continue our series of classes on linear response theory. So in this class we're going to first define the current operator and then the conductivity tensor how uh, we can express the current densities in terms of the applied electric field via the conductivity tensor. Then we're going to, to derive the Kubo formula, calculate uh, the, the linear response for the systems and for the, how to express the conductivity tensor in linear response via the current current correlation function. And finally, we're going to consider the, the case for a semi-isotropic conductivity tensor and how we can, can calculate the conductance for a uh, two-terminal system. Okay, so let's go right in. So the first thing we're going to do is to write a Hamiltonian for a particle in an electromagnetic field and we're going to use only the vector potential which here is, is not precisely written, but it can depend on both the position and time. But let's start with the case in which it depends on the position. Okay, so this would be then uh, the case for a particle on a magnetic field, for instance. And if this depends on time, also be considered, will ha also have an electric field appearing there. But let's consider just the magnetic field. Okay, so the, we can write this Hamiltonian in terms of the, the current density operator, which is defined here. So, if these are the field operators, this should be a dagger here, sorry. I can expand this, this Hamiltonian, essentially apply this operator into, into this, and I'll get two terms. One that depends on the gradients of the, the fields, and one that depends only on the density. Okay, so this one is sometimes referred to the, the paramagnetic case, and this one is the diamagnetic case. So uh, let's go to the blackboard real quick to show how these density uh, operators appear and how I can write them as the, these Hamiltonians as a kinetic energy plus the charge times the vector potential uh, scalar product with this uh, the sum of these current densities. So let's do it in the in the in the blackboard. So let's consider the case where we have this Hamiltonian and we want to, of course, apply, let's apply this operator to to this uh, state here. Okay. So we have. Um, h bar over i nabla plus e a squared so really applied to phi okay of r this is going to be um and there's going to be a phi dagger here let's just put it this so this is what this is minus i h nabla plus e a dot product minus i h nabla plus e a. So this will clearly have a uh, minus h bar. Uh, there's this 2m there, but let's let's just keep this. So it would be over this, right? When I apply this. And then there would be this other term here, which is going to be a minus i h minus i h. Uh, there will be a nabla scholar 
A. There's an E here too. Yeah, there's an E. Okay, I'll put this. And there's going to be a A scholar dagger. Psi. That should be a Psi dagger here. Okay. And yeah, let, let me divide this by, and okay, so that's the linear term, plus there's this term in E square, A square, Psi dagger, C. Okay, so let's look at this term now, then. Uh, in the Hamiltonian, there is this integral in position. So let's take a closer look at this term here. This one is going to give us the kinetic energy, but and this one's going to give you us the, the diamagnetic uh, response. And I'd like just to point out that if I integrate this R, there is, uh, let's take this constants out here, minus I H E, there's going to be a psi, and this is, of course, applying to this as, as well, okay, so the, this term would be uh, this times nabla scalar a phi, okay, plus a, oh, sorry, psi dagger a scalar something like that, right? Now, let's look at this integral, which we can integrate by parts. So this guy, give us, if I integrate this by parts, call this a f, and this is g prime, or something like that, this would give me uh, this times or give a vector or something like that integrated over right uh, minus infinity to infinity but it's a volume integral and this is going to go to to zero eventually but now there's going to be a term like this which is going to be uh, the, the, the kind of the derivative of that scalar with a sign. Okay. Then on here on top, so this will give me if I if I right take this this boundary term to zero, this is going to be minus I H E. Uh, there is this integral in dr, and there's going to be a minus psi dagger scalar A phi, okay? plus uh, yeah, these, these an, is, a, is an operator, this is a vector in real space, so this would be something like a scalar psi gradient of psi. So th this is also a vector, okay? And I could write this, that's how the book writes, as I H E A or sorry not not, a, not just yet yet but this integral of A
scalar. <coughs> Sorry. With psi dagger psi minus psi gradient of psi dagger, sorry, something like that. Okay, so that's that's how we we write a Hamiltonian in this in this sense in this sense, right? Once we do this, we just go ahead and plug everything in. We have the sum over spins here. I have this minus h bar over 2m psi daggers, which is just the kinetic energy. This is k. And then I'll have the other terms, right? I have uh, now this i of course there's this dr here plus this sum over spin dr uh, i h e over 2m a uh, Psi dagger, psi minus psi dagger, number of psi, there's a dagger here. Okay, plus that term there, that E square over uh, 2M, A square, A square, psi dagger, psi. All right, and then that's uh, if I define this as one half of J A, and this as J uh, or uh, A scalar, sorry, A scalar with J A, and this is A scalar with J Navalo. I get uh, precisely what the expression that we had in, in the in the slide. So let's go back to the slide. So this is just to give you an idea of where these currents appear. Okay, so we learned how to write the Hamiltonian in terms of these current densities. And now what I want to do is do a perturbation. Essentially, I'm going to take A and go into A plus delta A, such that the Hamiltonian will go from H naught to delta H. And delta H will have precisely this form to first order in A. Notice that A appears quadratically here in this, in this term, right? So A times A. So if I only to, want to keep two linear orders in delta A, I need to 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 have right so there, there's there's going to be two terms here so I I'll, there's one a plus delta a scalar with this there's going to be a delta a here too so I have two terms in two linear order here so this factor of one half goes away and I have delta h equals the, this j naught which is a sum of these two terms scalar with delta a right so you can easily convince yourself of that and this is the perturbation that we're going to, to do to to do in linear response and see what we we get out of that especially when this delta a depends on time so let's see how we do that. so let's now allow for this vector potential to vary in time so if this changes in time uh, that means that there's an electric field associated with that just by Faraday's law, right? And uh, I'm assuming here there's no other uh, electric potential associated with this electric field, so just to keep things simple. But in principle, so if I have this perturbation turn on at a time t equals t0, 
then I would have an electric field and this electric field would have consequences, right? So what we want to do is to see how the current density changes, right? So it, this is the current density at equilibrium at T naught or before that, which we calculated before. And this would be the, the, the new current density with uh, these uh, additional terms in delta A, okay? Now, if I'm talking about electrons, then I, I want to, to be able to calculate how this, the current density times the charge here, so this, the electric current, would depend on this induced del, uh, electric field. And that is precisely what you call the conductivity tensor. To linear order in this delta E, what would be the, the current density as a function of this, delta, this, this electric field. And so that's what we want to calculate, this conductivity tensor. So in order to, to make things a little bit more simple, let's calculate one component. Okay, say the X component. All right? So here is the, the current for an electron, an actual electron, right? So the the, the current density for, for the electron at the direction x. So all currents and all fields are at direction x. And that would give me the xx component of the conductivity tensor. So the current here, the current density is also with at this the same direction x and delta a is also collinear okay so everything is is in a single direction you could do cross direction say x and y it will be just you know but but dif different indices here so let's take xx as an example and of course the electric field would be minus ddt of delta e so i can if i Fourier transform this, and I'm going to assume that this is periodic in time, so I, I have, a, say, a frequency omega here, or at least I can, I can get the, a Fourier transform out of this, then uh, when I Fourier transform this, the time derivative just becomes minus i times the frequency, coupled with this minus sign here, I get i omega delta a. So this is a stage set for us to do linear response th theory and try to calculate sigma xx, okay? So last, last class we derived the expression for linear response when we have this perturbation turned on uh, at some time t0. I'll try to, to put the link here for, for the previous class. So you, you but you should be familiar with it, this expression. And now we have everything set so that we can calculate uh, the, the, the response for the current operator. Notice that this is the current in equilibrium, or calculated at equilibrium. And this is a sum of our J0, which is the current density at uh, B before I apply the electric field and the, the perturbation in, in the perturbed uh, current also will be which will also be calculated here in, in equilibrium as, as it should. Now the, the point is that uh, J naught and this should be well of course there's a C a C dot here and, uh, if these are would be vectors, but we're all considering the x component. Uh, J naught calculated at the equilibrium is zero, since before I change the the vector potential in time, so I don't have any time dependence. There's no electric field, so there's no uh, steady current in the system, right? So that's one point. So uh, this. There will be two contributions here. One of them will be zero. Okay. 
So let's see how we get the, the Kubo, Kubo formula for the conductivity, how we can calculate the X component of the conductivity tensor as this, and already putting the result here. This is going to be uh, the expected value of the charge density calculated at the equilibrium, which is just, just uh, the constant term, right, in, in, in a sense. And there will be then the response, which will be the current current correlation function calculated at frequency omega. Okay, so let's see how we arrive at this, this expression. So our task here is to calculate then the expected value of J and try to associate it with the electric field induced at time t equals t0. All right, so we can do that in frequency domain pretty easily, but let's just write this in, in time domain so that we, we know what we're, we're dealing with. So let's just write this expression here, j at, it's going to depend on r and t, but let's take this, it's going to be j uh, 0, let's put this term here first, J0 plus E over M rho of R A calculated at in equilibrium. Okay. Then there's going to be minus I integral between T0 and infinity dt prime T theta T minus T0 of what? Of the commutator of j and delta h. And delta h will have this already, let's put this other integral here, right? There's going to be an e, an integral over r, let's call it r prime, okay? Of what? Of there's going to be here then the commutator of j at r and t commutator of j naught r prime and t prime times delta a at r prime t prime okay. All right, uh, so notice that this is a sum of j naught plus e rho delta a. So if I would keep this term here, I would get delta a squared here, and we don't want that, so we go for, for 1. So already going to do this, j naught plus e over m rho delta a, so this is linear in delta a here, this is delta a, right, delta, the delta there, minus, uh, let's see how do we put this, do I, yeah, let's put the, the integral in r here, plus e dr prime uh, this minus i integral here theta t minus t naught of the correlation function of j naught at r t and j naught r prime t prime times delta a. Yeah, there's no vector here, sorry. Because we're all calculating at the x direction. Okay. Okay. All right, so we, we get this, we call this the correlation function 
of j naught j naught at r t and r prime t prime. And as I mentioned, in equilibrium, this term will be zero. This one will not be zero, right? I still have a charge density here. Uh, but I can I can uh, then clearly see that if we do the, the Fourier transform here, at least in time, we could do it in space as well. But uh, this is local, so it might not have uh, uh, precisely that spatial invariance that we we want. Might might, might not have a spatial invariance, but so let's we can do it in in Fourier in Fourier space. So this is in time okay but already in time we, we see what we want to to obtain this would be j of r at time t equals e over m rho r not let's do this integral here and the r prime there's going to be a delta r minus r prime here we want plus e times the correlation function uh, j naught j naught r r this is of course going to be a function of t minus t prime okay all of this multiplied by delta a at r prime and and t prime if we also add a delta t minus t prime here okay all right so Let's Fourier transform this. So what we're calculating is J of R at a frequency omega plus because well this is a retarded right retarded. So uh, the delta of course it transforms to one. So this would be uh, dr e m there will be a delta r minus r prime here uh, plus E R R prime Omega right and the Fourier transform all that multiplying by the Fourier transform of this guy which would be delta omega and we know that we can relate that easily to the electric field by just dividing this is delta e of r delta a r at omega right so this is going to be delta a at r prime omega which is delta e at r prime omega divided by i omega all right so we'll just put this in here delta e at r prime omega i omega
all right so this will give me what and this is all integrating r prime and notice that what we want is precisely is something similar it's minus e this is divided by by minus e right integral in r dt uh, prime or if you, if you if you trans transform this to omega uh, that would be even easier but this is what we're gonna we're gonna do now so we're almost there uh, so we have this is integral of r here is e m rho r delta r minus r prime plus one mi minus i omega plus minus i e over omega retarded correlation function r r prime omega all this times delta e at r prime omega and this and this is sigma x x at r r prime omega divided by minus 1 over e right so that's uh we notice that there's two terms here one that depends on the density and one that depends on the the response function so let's uh see how we get uh to to the expressions that we had before. Okay, so we just derived this expression here in, in, in frequency domain, right? The relationship of minus E times this with the electric field and depends on one over omega and, and of course on the current current correlation function at a given omega, which we should be able to, to calculate uh, for a given system right so it would depend and this is already in omega in omega domain so this is a, the so-called Kubo formula for the conductivity so keep in mind that it depends on this response function which is the current current correlation function okay as one extra example let's consider the case of the conductance through a system where quantum fluctuations are important so first let's remind you what the difference between the conductance and the con conductivity so so far we calculated the Kubo formula for the conductivity uh, which represents the essentially the response of the system by providing an electric current so the electric current is minus e the charge of the electron times this current density that we, def we defined before and there we know that this would be then proportional to the ele applied electric field via the conductivity ten tensor so let's consider again the case of that the the current density is flowing in one direction let's call it x right so it's flowing say from this point to this point there's a voltage difference here and there's a cross-section area A and the length L here. So there's a current density flowing here. So, and, and of course, mi minus E times this current density is the, is the electric current. So how electric current density, okay? So how do we calculate the electric current, the one that we actually measure? Well, we have to integrate over a cross-section A the electric current the the essentially flux of the electric current density through that area right 
So when you calculate this flux, we have to consider the, the electric current density calculate at points R uh, positioned at precisely the, the, this area here. So that's how we calculate the current, the electric current from the current density or the electric current density or the current density itself, right? So if you have a uniform sample where this doesn't change with position, say, right? And this current is the same for any cross-section here, right? The cross-section is the same. Uh, the, the conductance will be related by the conductivity as in, in this sense. So the, the electric field will just be uh, this... Uh, the potential times the, the the distance right or the the potential divided by the distance right so e times d gives me the, the potential so i over v will give me will be just a times the conductivity the dc conductivity since there's no time varying here so we, uh, everything happens at omega equals zero divided by the length so you, you can essentially derive this formula uh, by you know, just putting the, the relationship be between this and the electric field, and there will be a conduct uh, 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 conductivity appearing there. So it definitely should be linear with the con conductivity here. There will be the area coming out of here. This is, this is constant, and then the, there's the electric field here. Here is going to be the electric field times L, so you, you get the, this expression easily for a uniform sample. Now, for non-uniform samples, it's things are more complicated, right? You have to to calculate this integral, and this integral integral might depend on the position x. So this the current density, and this this should be the electric current density. There's an e missing here, sorry might change as you go along the, the say, the cross-section, right? The area might change, but also the J, the density, might change as well as you, as you go from the area. It's not just a geometrical point, so because the sample is non-uniform. So in this case, how, how do we do, right? So in this case, uh, the, the expression will involve the electric field, Right, and we involve also the conductivity, uh, be, which might might have might depend on x and x prime. Say, so I have to I'll have to do an integral uh, over x and calculate this uh, two point uh, correlation function between x and x prime, which will be the conductance essentially. And let's see how we. Obtain this conductance. But this conductance, as we expect, would be will depend on a correlation function. But here's going to be the current-current correlation function times the electric field, which might not be uh, uniform. So let's go to the blackboard and see how we we get to this expression. Okay, so let's calculate then the current and, and try to express this in terms of the the conductivity there. So. Let's start with this for non-uniform uh, samples. We have uh, the current at a given position x will be the integral of a of x dA. Then there's well there's dA with the n times j, right? So this j will also be an integral now in a volume r prime. Yeah, this, expect the value of j here, right? Whatever you're measuring. So there should be something like this, r prime. Then sigma x, x at r and r prime at omega equals zero, right? So dc uh, times delta e at r prime. Now notice this is, is is an area. So this is also can be expressed as an integral of an area at ax prime, say, the ax prime 
and an integral over x prime. So remember we have the cylinder going here, the current is all, all in this thing. So to integrate in this volume, we in, can integrate in the area and then integrate here from 0 to L. Okay? All right. Now, we can, and of course this R will, this belongs to the area. And here there will be an R perpendicular, which will belong to this area X prime and, and also the coordinates X prime. So there will be the, the two of them. Okay. And this, this electric field uh, also will depend on, on those. Now, remember that uh, the conductivity tensor for omega equals zero should be, uh, first, there's no free chargers here, so this term is zero, okay? So we're considering only this case. And we have to take the, the limit of sigma xx r r prime is then the limit of omega going to zero i e square omega chi r j naught j naught r r prime omega okay so let's just remember this is zero okay so this will be a correlation function. So we can, we, can, we can do this trick now and write this, right? So there will be an integral in dA, an integral in Ax prime, dAx prime, and then there, there will be this correlation function, which is going to be uh, something like that, right? function of j not at r at a, a, a position r belonging to a and x and here is going to be j not of r prime belonging to a uh, x prime and x prime right so when i in integrate this these two i'll get well if i multiply this by my minus a minus e which is what i'm doing here right this would be essentially minus e times a uh well then i have to put the minus e in there too right so that this is becomes the ge notice that this g j naught so ge equals minus e j naught so this will become then a current will become this a correlation function of these integrals da d j zero R X the A prime so A X prime J zero R prime X prime which is a current so this is I at a position X and I at position X prime Right, this is the electric current. So this is like a current, current correlation function. All right. Okay. So. 
then we, we got rid of the integrals in, in, in the areas and only left with this integral in x prime. So let's keep doing this. So my current at position x is going to be an integral 0 to L of dx prime and then the limit of omega going to 0 of the real part well so, sorry I, I had to to I forgot to take the real part here of this right to get a, a real uh, omega equals zero correlation function sorry and that would be then the limit of the real part of e yeah there's this e square and one of the e's go went into j naught to to be, become the, the current right so uh, yeah, minus e. So this will give me just e over i omega times the current current correlation function at omega. times then the electric field and this this our prime is, is essentially at x prime right because this is I'm integrating over the the position in in around the surface okay here and this would be the conductivity g x x prime. So this would be the Kubo formula for the conductance, not the conductivity, the conductance. Limit of omega going to zero, real part of e i omega times the current current correlation retarded correlation function sometimes written as c i x i x prime retarded at a given frequency omega all right so then then we are left with this expression for the current which is pretty much used so g x x times the electric field at x prime okay so remember this is a retarded correlation function that we can use so let's go back to the slide and wrap it this up. Okay, so we now understand how the conductance for non-uniform samples will depend on the retarded correlation function between the current current correlation function. So uh, the conductivity has this current density current density correlation functions here is like I included the integral of the, the areas inside the correlation function and I get this current current. So in next class we're going to apply that for the Anderson model and, and try to see how the the transport in the, in the Anderson model works. Okay so that's it for this class hope you enjoyed and that finishes our two classes on linear response theory one for one class we discussed the dielectric response function and in this class we discussed transport properties. Okay, see you next class then.